friends and welcome to my channel. My name is Yessi and today I'm going to show you how I made this delicious sandia tower. So sandia basically means watermelon in Spanish and this is my take on making ahi tuna. I hope you like it. Okay let's get started. Now these are all the ingredients that you will need. This is what I cooked the watermelon in. Soy sauce, agave syrup, sesame seed oil, and the most important ingredient, dried kelp. This is what's gonna give your dish a fishy flavor. I started off by cutting the top and bottom off of the watermelon and then setting it on the side and peeling it all around. I then cubed it and this is up to you how big you want the diced uh, watermelon to be. I prefer the smaller pieces. I did cook up to six cups of watermelon. I wish I would have doubled the batch because it was so good. I then took the dried kelp that I had and I cut it into pieces to add into cook with the watermelon. I only had this piece of kelp on hand, but I wish I would have had more. The more kelp you use, the fishier of a flavor you will get. I added half a cup of soy sauce. Um, now, depending on what soy sauce you use, just make sure um, that it's not too salty. I actually used a low sodium soy sauce, so for me, half a cup worked perfectly. Uh, pure sesame seed oil, I added two teaspoons of that. And then I added two teaspoons of agave syrup. So I cooked the watermelon on high heat for a total of 40 minutes. Um, you're pretty much going to cook it until all the liquid is absorbed. Uh, the less liquid you have, the better results you'll get in making your uh, sandia tower. So just keep that in mind. Um, you want it to be quite dry at the end. Now while the watermelon was cooking, I went ahead and I made my mango salsa. I used one jalapeno, half of an onion, two tomatoes, two mangoes, and some cilantro, and of course lime juice and salt to taste. And this mango salsa, you guys, is so delicious. You could actually just eat it with chips, um, have it as like a pico de gallo, like you would eat pico de gallo with chips. It's so good. Um, but here is towards the end of the cooking time of the watermelon. As you see, it's shrunk quite a lot. And um, here I had already removed the kelp out of it. So I was just left with the watermelon. The seeds didn't bother me. I didn't pick those out, but you can if you'd like, depending on how you're serving it. And now that the salsa is done, here is my attempt on creating the sandia tower. Um, what I did was I took a mayo jar and I cut the top and bottom. I needed a cylinder shape um, to pile in the mango salsa and the watermelon. And this is how I did it. It was simple. I didn't have like a cylinder shape, but this worked perfectly. Now this is where I realized that my mango salsa and watermelon were too wet because it kept on coming out of the base of the um, cylinder shape, mold, whatever you call it. And um, this is what happened. As you see, that didn't work out too well for me, but here is my second attempt. I did strain the water, the excess water, out of both the watermelon and the salsa, and it turned out way better. And I also made it a little shorter than the first attempt. And here it is. It's beautiful, and it was delicious. I hope you guys get a chance to recreate this recipe. If you do, please tag me at Yessie's Plant-Based Diet. I would love to see your results. Thanks so much for watching.